The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, we'll do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace. I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the wind and calm. Come as the fire and burn. Come as light reveal. Convince, convict, convert us until we are wholly yours. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another, another advocate to be with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth. Some would say, and I am one of them, that in certain arenas of American life, truth is in short supply. Was it an insurrection or just another tourist day? Truth is in short supply. And we desperately need truth. We desperately need that other advocate. Jesus was the first one. Shift happens. It's Pentecost. The story 50 days ago was all about Jesus of Nazareth. And now the story is all about us. Empowered by that advocate. That person beside us that has been sent by Jesus to plead truth, 
to plead truth in the concophony of lies that so defines our moment in time. We need that advocate to move beside and encourage and to amplify those inspirited voices of truth that sound out truth, that resonate with truth, even as gunshots echo in grocery stores and in churches and in elementary schools and hospitals, day after day, week after week. And yet, I heard truth. I heard truth this week. Coco Goff, an 18-year-old tennis progeny, recent high school graduate, the age of our confirmands, many of them. Also, she was defeated in the final match. She astounded the tennis world by reading, by, by reaching the French Open finally at the age of 18. But I heard truth. That young woman took her moment of fame and took her moment of personal achievement to speak out about gun violence. She had her moment and she took it. And as she spoke, I felt in my being the prompting advocacy of the Holy Spirit of truth. When she spoke, truth resonated. And I felt a similar inner resonance I felt the spirit of truth pounding on my heart as she used that moment so generously, so generously. In the midst of the noise of posturing politicians and sobbing fathers, again, I heard truth, a truth from an eighth grade girl Yolanda Renee King speaking her truth, demanding that she be safe in school, writing an editorial in the Washington Post as an eighth grader. The spirit of truth is prompting hearts constantly. In the midst of the existential sobs and the posturing of politicians who speak as if they are good people who are foiled by an 18th century reference to bearing arms. In the midst of all this faithless inaction rises the inspirited voice of young David Hogg. He survived Parkland slaughter and he's giving his one precious trusted life to end this season of madness. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth sent out of love by love incarnate, the Lord Jesus is being called, that spirit of truth is being called alongside of those open and available to the spirit's promptings. Even in this wretched season, and to those of you I'm about to confirm, notice they're your age. You don't have to wait. The Spirit's right here, prompting you and calling forth your voice of truth. So, how do you imagine the Holy Spirit? Do you think of a white bird? Or do you think of the Spirit as kind of a uh, amorphous feel-good gas, like the stuff the, Guinness, the dentist gives you when she's about to pull your wisdom teeth. <laughs> Panelma is the Greek word for spirit. It's in the feminine. Parakletos, para means alongside. Kletos is to be called alongside. Parakletos is the one called beside us to help us plead the truth. Like a defense attorney 
or a prosecuting attorney helping to secure justice. I don't conjure up doves or feel-good gas when I think about the Spirit. I conjure up an attorney like Joyce Vance. Brilliant, serious, tenacious, truth-telling, and a true advocate who knows the pain of our moment because her own father-in-law was assassinated because he happened to be a federal judge. I trust her. I want her beside us in the power of her ability and in the power of her truth. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is not so much sweet, soft, or gentle, but powerful. The Spirit is galvanizing, encouraging, and relentless in the passionate pursuit of truth. Teaching the church in yesteryear and teaching the church today how to speak God's truth and even how to be God's truth in our lives, in our now, capital N. It may not be the now we want, but it is the now, capital N, that God is trusting you with, those of you that are going to be confirmed and claim your baptism today. And in order to embrace, in order to say yes to the promptings of the Spirit, we, first, we must first let that Spirit teach us how to say no. A resounding no to that which corrupts and to that which destroys. I've been noticing lately as I've been doing confirmations that the first thing I have to do from you all is to extract a no from you in a few minutes. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Do you reaffirm that no that was said at your baptism? For example, I went to work on the internet trying to find out in the midst of the blame games that were all over the news. You know, the teacher propped open the door, the police were slow, his friends did not report him, his parents are dysfunctional, yes, yes, of course, all of that. But I decided to find out who made the gun. Check out Daniel defense on the internet. Wait till after the sermon. <laughs> I checked out Daniel defense and it galvanized a sleeping old retired bishop in me. Daniel defense. Daniel defense made the weapon that butchered those children. Daniel Defense is a company based in Georgia. Oh, and they're good customer relations people. They send Easter greeting cards to their customers. Easter greeting cards. The card was the open Bible. The open Bible was cradling an assault rifle. And a large pectoral cross was draped over the rifle. And the words, he is risen, were inscribed on the card. You can't make this up. What was worse was the picture of a toddler with an assault rifle and the detached magazine next to it pointing out, of course, that the toddler was quite safe. Cradled in the baby's lap was this caption from the book of Proverbs. Train up the child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. This 
is the devil quoting scripture, which the devil knows how to do. This is not heresy. It does not rise to the level of heresy. It is apostasy. Here this morning, we're in the process of remembering, and we will rendezvous at the font. We will rendezvous at this font to remember the waters of baptism that flowed over these people. And we will remember the words that said, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and you are marked as Christ's own forever. Just like the kids in Vivaldi who were baptized and recently took their first Eucharist right before they were shot. by a Daniel defense rifle. I noticed like I have never noticed before that before I ask all of you to say yes to Jesus Christ, before that, before that yes that the Holy Spirit standing beside you is empowering, I must ask you for a no. Do you reaffirm the no that was said at your baptism? The no to personified evil, Satan who is just like Daniel Defense that can quote scripture, just go ahead Jesus and sing uh, on eagle's wings and everything will be fine when you jump off the temple. And Jesus said no. And you will be saying no to, to evil powers of this world which corrupt. You will say no to societal evil. Societal evil like a gun lobby that in 2016 gave $30 million to one candidate. That's the evil of society. You will say no to personal sinful desires. Greed, yes. Lust, yes. Untruth, yes, but particularly now you need to say no to that which defeats us and causes us to not act. The refusal to claim the power that we have been given and will be given. I mean, if an eighth grade girl can do it, let's do it. Let's do it. The Lord Jesus, who sends us the desperately needed spirit of truth, said costly knows his entire ministry. The devil invites him to sing eagle's wings and spectacularly pull off a stunt and he says no. Some judgmental folks with some rocks want to kill a woman whom they caught because she could not run as fast as the man who got away and Jesus said no. His disciples discounted children just like our Senate. And Jesus said no and put a child front and center. Death claimed a father's only daughter. And the crowd said too late. And Jesus said no. Folks tried to turn a sacrificial offering into a money-making fundraising scheme and Jesus turned over the tables and said, no. Peter said, let's be pious together and make a new Trinitarian cult. You and Moses and Elijah. And Jesus said, no. The first retreat that Jesus had was with the Spirit who drove him into the desert to teach him to say no so that his life could be that essential yes 
to God's love. So for those of you who are going to rendezvous with me in a few moments, and for all of you listening, for all of us who are the community of the baptized in this now that we find ourselves in, I hope you will claim the spirit that tenacious attorney right next to you. I hope you will feel her, the Holy Spirit, right now and beg her to teach you how to say no. No's that will be the essential steps to the yes that your heart most desires. I believe there is a yes dying to be born in all of us right now and the spirit is right beside us saying go for it go for it god loves you and god trusts you with this ever so hurting and desperate world god trusts you and god trusts me and god will not leave us God has sent a tenacious, dynamic advocate that will teach you how to say no and then how to say yes with every fiber of your being. So listen to Coco and listen to Yolanda and listen to David. The spirit is busy. The Spirit is busy with you.